Hello, hello, everybody. It has been a while because brain, but we are going to continue our Ace Attorney trilogy journey. Uh, last time we interrogated old man not Roshi, who can't even teach us the Kamehameha, saw the brain damage girl threaten Monsieur Mantits at his restaurant. We then went to the, like, the Lone Shark, Lone Tiger Den, and got FNAF jump scared by the brain damage girl like three times. That's pretty much it. The, the, the interrogation of the old guy went on for a long time. I thought that I was onto something when I was most definitely not. So yeah, let us continue and see if we can find things. Like Again, I'm fairly certain that I have most of it figured out in my head. Programmer guy was a gambling dude and was in debt to the Lone Tiger. And because the restaurant is also in debt to Lone Tiger, Lone Tiger guy met up with Guy, programmer man, at the in-debt restaurant. Who knows, maybe the old guy is also in debt to the Lone Tiger. Let's find out. Let's talk, maybe. Um, I'm sorry about what happened in court earlier today. Everyone will be talking about me behind my back now. A dirty old man who is so busy looking at the serving girl's backside. That he can't remember her face. A filthy, depraved animal. But not at all. Are you listening to me, boy? I don't care what you say. I see that waitress put it in. She put some white powder into the young lad's javachino. We hear you. And another thing, the young layabout was wearing an earpiece. On the same side as the lens of his broken spectacles. We're really sorry. So I made a little mistake about the vase. So what? I know what I saw. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you. Okay, okay. Take it easy, please, Mr. Kudo. Don't tell me to take it easy, you spaghetti brat. Take this. Um, you said you were a craftsman, right? Ka! The modern world casts on his craftsmen like me aside in droves. Surely it's not that. I come from a long line of craftsmen, right back to the time of the shoguns. Do you hear me? I didn't become an embroiderer. I was born one. Actually, I'm kind of in the same situation myself. I... I... I wanted to stick my fingers up that dribbling old judge's nose and scream right down his ear hole. OBJECTION! Oh, so did you want to become a lawyer when you were young? I don't think that's quite it, Maya. I think he's just in a bad mood, that's all. I got a suit, I'll be a frustration inside, and it's ready to burst! If we let him start rambling now, he might never shut him up. What should I do? I don't think we really need to worry about too much. Hmm. This is mostly so that if I choose the wrong one, I can easily reload and not have to go through <laughs> five million conversational thingies. Uh, well, let's suck it up. Well, let's have a humorous situation. Guess I better let him talk. It'll be funny at the very least, and we shouldn't have too much to worry about, I don't think. So, there's not much call for craftsmen these days, then. Of course not, you idiot! All I'm good for nowadays is running errands. Errands? Everyone takes advantage of the elderly. Buy some bread, Gramps. Take the dog for a walk, Granddad. Feed the pigeons, old man. What am I? Some sort of two-bit community handyman? Um, well... Buy some bread, now that I can understand. But what's the point of feeding some seedy pigeons? Why don't people say they need... Why don't people say what they mean? Get lost! That's what they're trying to say! Oh yes, I'm just an inconvenience, you see. At home, at that restaurant, I just get in the way, don't I? I'm sure you don't... Wait a minute. What did he just say? Get in the way at the restaurant? At home and at that restaurant? 
Hold up. By restaurant, are you talking about Tres Bien? Did you get asked to run an errand there too? Yes, I did! The very day the young brat is poisoned! What? Okay. Uh, I thought that I was. I. I thought that I was going to get the funny aha route, but in actuality, I got the informational route. <laughs> Uh, then again, what do I expect? This is the same one where I needed to do the silly option when talking to an ace detective. So who knows the beginning? <laughs> so on the day of the incident, what were you asked to do? Glad you asked, boy, because I'll tell you what I was asked to do. All of a sudden, that young lad slumped over at the table. The serving girl collapsed. So he saw her collapse. Huh. That's interesting, actually, because... Hmm. Because I initially thought that... Like... I initially thought that maybe she was already knocked out. And... But at the same time, she would have known. Yeah, because I think this is still linked into my... Insane conspiracy theory that it happened twice. <laughs> hey, what's up, potty people? Uh, getting actual information out of the pervy old man, actually. And this is interesting. Again, I thought that she, like, my brain went conspiracy mode and it's, it's like forgot to untangle the conspiracy on when our, our client passed out. <laughs> and I broke that vase. It all happened so fast, I was in a bit of a daze, you see. Then the owner shouted over to me. Excuse me, why you? Call the police. Call them yourself, I should have said back, but I didn't think of it at the time. <laughs> Ain't that just what it is? <laughs> Hours later, you think of a good comeback in an argument. So, did you end up calling the police? Like I said, I was in a bit of a daze. Did you call them on your cell phone? God, do I look like I'd have one of those newfangled thingamajigs? It doesn't this take place in, like, the 2020s? Cell phones, especially in Japan or Fornia, would be, like, 30 years old now. They went out looking for a payphone, of course. And this is also bringing me back to a thing where, if I am correct, the guy said that he called the police... Uh, where is, like, a, the, in the autopsy? Yeah, because it says that he died somewhere between 1.30 and 2.30. Ah, oh, but when did the radio show happen? Happens every day at 1.30, so the guy died closer to 1.30 than not. And then I believe this guy only called the police at, like, 2.25 or 2.45, something like that. So it, it took him a long time. There's a lot of information to go over. You went looking for one? I couldn't find one right away, you know. Wandered around for five minutes or so. Five minutes? So for five minutes after the incident happened... Yes, Suri. The owner was at Tresbian on his own. Why didn't you mention this in court this morning? Well, I would have if you'd given me the chance. But all you did was bully me out of the courtroom. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kudo. You've certainly earned your kudos for today. Wait, wait a minute! If that's the case, there's more! I've got more to say! Oh yes, I remember something else! Bailiff, escort the witness out of the courtroom! It's not my fault! You're the ones to blame! He could have at least told us before we got to court. Is it really that important that Mr. Kudo was the one who called the police? Yes! And again, I could have sworn that we... I could have sworn that we already knew that he called the police at like 2.25 to 2.45 or something like that. Some, 2 something 5. And again, if the guy won his ticket at 1.30, that's like an hour unaccounted for. What's important is the unaccounted time before the police arrived. The victim was dead, and Maggie was unconscious. Which leaves that woman, I mean, that man, alone in the restaurant. Mr. Kudo might have been chased out of the place on purpose. What do you mean? Maybe a certain someone didn't want him in the restaurant. Ah! 
Oh, sure, you go ahead and say I was in on... Great, great, my mind is now jumping back to the possibility... Bleh. Now my brain is trying to go the conspiracy route again. It's like, hey, hey, the the the, the thing that ha it happening twice actually is real. Actually, I don't know. My brain is just hooked onto that theory that for some reason, Glenn, like for some reason, the guy said I did it. Because again, there has to have been. Okay, to get my thoughts in order, my brain wants to say that the poisoning, quote-unquote, happened twice. Why? Because Kudo and everybody else, well, ev Kudo claims that there was nobody else at the restaurant except Glenn, the deceased victim guy, our client, the waitress, and the owner of the restaurant, Armstrong. But our client, Maggie, says that there were two people at Glenn's table when he was poisoned. And that the other guy sprinkled something into his coffee. Hmm. And then there was his whole thing of, like, Glenn, like, using... Could it... Could it have been that i don't know <laughs> let him cook it's like there's just so many moving pieces it's like it feels like it has to have happened twice one where kudo was there and but it's like which one happened first is the question because i don't think they moved the body i they, so the but why would they fake a thing and then there was also the thing that the winning lottery ticket wasn't stolen. The one for $500,000 wasn't stolen. My brain says that it had to have happened twice. One where the brain damage lady gave... I don't know. I don't know. My brain is just hooked on the idea that the poisoning happened twice. And that way, it could happen once where Glenn was alone. And then happen again where the tiger loan shark guy was there poisoning as well. But the question is, when, like, Maggie had to have been there to see Glenn actually get poisoned, but then they would have had to move the... I don't know. My brain is hooked on that idea, but there's, like, there's just enough stuff to point me in the direction that it could have happened, because, again... The guy supposedly died between 1.30 and 2.30. The radio show says that it happens every Monday at 1.30. But if the old man went and called the police only five minutes after the guy died, it would have been closer to 2.30 than 1.30. So my brain says that it had to have happened twice. One for Vic... But it just makes no sense because it just makes no sense. But there's, there's so many. Let's just keep going. This is weird. My brain is probably just going off the rails. Like when it came to mask to mask, and my brain went, actually, his wife is mask to mask because she's a thrill seeker and she wants to save her husband because she actually cares. Uh, this is just conspiracy theory brain. But, oh, sure, you go ahead and say I was in the way as usual. I suppose I should have been getting myself covered in pigeon poop instead. Hmm? We need to get more details about what happened exactly. From Maggie and from Mr. Armstrong. Yeah, because there's just enough details that make me want to think that something weird happened. And we can't even look at the, uh, the table that he was at. But who knows? Let's go to the kitchen and see if we can find Armstrong. Looks like Mr. Armstrong's out again. But the place is open for business. You can't have an open restaurant without a chef. Hey, it's not my fault, Nick. Don't take it out on me. Only a couple of minutes after the incident happened, Mr. Kudo left the scene, leaving Mr. Armstrong here alone. Ah... 
I, I thought that was Phoenix continuing, so that, that is not a sound that would come out of my unless she was possessed by Phoenix's dead spirit. Ah, uh, missing when we need to talk to him the most. Maybe he's trying to avoid us on purpose. Don't know why he'd do that. I guess he's just that scared, but let's go to the detention center then. As your brain is conjuring up, like, fake scenarios of what could happen because it's just going conspiracy brain ad. <laughs> Evidence says this. This is a possibility. Remember to stay hydrated. Your brain it could use the cooling. Oh, Mr. Wright! Hello, Maggie. So they finished questioning you? Wasn't it just unbelievable in court today, sir? I'm gonna stay up all night and blog about everything that happened. Do you have access to a computer? Weren't you scared? It was pretty touch and go in there. <laughs> yeah, but you totally nailed that old man. Well, he was all over the place with his testimony. He's not the only one. Huh? What do you mean? Everyone else's testimonies don't match up either. Not what I remember, not with what I remember of the incident anyway. Okay, my brain is now thinking that... I don't know. I don't know. It could have to do with maybe the... The apron, because it's covered in coffee and re a red stain. Could be ketchup. Could be blood. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Could it have to do with the brain damage, girl? She had a bandage on her head. So, but now, why would... But that would necessitate brain damage, girl, to be hit in the head hard enough to bleed and that blood somehow getting on Maggie's apron. Which, maybe, again, if we go by the possibility of... It happening twice, and if Brain Damage Girl, who works for the Lone Shark, pretended to be Maggie. So, the idea... But, okay. Brain is now saying that maybe the Lone Shark guy pretended to be Glenn and pretended to poison himself... Or, like, pretended to die from poisoning so they could frame Maggie. Because they planned on poisoning Glenn later. But they... But again, that requires the old guy to... That requires Kudo to leave and call the police closer to 2.30 rather than 1.30. Huh... But yeah, my brain is still saying that Lone Shark Guy wanted to frame Maggie for the poisoning. So he had his creepy, murderous cohort wear the maid outfit so that they could have Kudo as an eyewitness. And Armstrong is in his pocket because Armstrong is terrified of the Lone Shark. But that requires the Lone Shark to have motive. Which could be the MC Bomber disc. So it's possible that at 1.30, Glenn came in to meet up with the Lone Shark because he was going to sell the MC Bomber disc data to the Lone Shark for $500,000 to pay off his gambling debt. But... And the reason that the Lone Shark wanted to have it at Tresbien is because the Tresbien is in his pocket, also to the tune of $500,000. So, once the guy who was listening to the lottery at the same time of dealing with the Lone Shark, he realized that he won $500,000 and didn't need to betray his te uh, the tech company he worked for anymore. So he probably said that to the Lone Shark's face and said, ha ha, deal off. And then the Lone Shark decided to poison him and 
which probably led to Maggie passing out. And so they decided to then set up the situation because Kudo is a regular. So it's possible that for whatever reason, either the Lone Shark or Armstrong was like, hey, if the old guy's a regular, let's frame this shit. And Brain Damage Girl, dressed in Maggie's apron at least... And that's where the stains could probably come from, maybe. With, again, depends. Oh! Hmm. I don't know. Huh. My brain just went, hey, what if the broken, like, water vase on Kudo's table is important? And maybe Brain Damage Girl tripped on the water or slipped, banging her head which might then explain the ketchup blood on the apron because that's the only person who has any damage to them. Everybody else is fine or poisoned. The only person that could have bled is the brain damage girl. But we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> Great, now I'm just digging myself deeper. It's like, ah, it happened twice. Happened twice. But it also means that they put... The, like, they had to have moved the dead body and put the dead body back, but at the same time, if it's just like, ah, he was poisoned, they look for poison, maybe they didn't really look things over too deeply. It doesn't ex... And again, it depends. I guess the Lone Shark, because, like, my brain is now saying, but ah, if the guy won $500,000, why wouldn't the Lone Shark take the winning lottery ticket at the same time? And it could be that maybe the Lone Shark isn't super dumb, or his brain-damaged cohort. I keep saying brain damage just because of the bandage around her head. It's like, I don't know her name. But a head damage cohort was like, no, sir, you should leave it as a, a, a way to frame the waitress. But the one thing that I don't get is like, why is everyone saying that Beard did it when she passed out? Why would she pass out? She poisoned the guy, pass out. Like, what? I don't understand. But that would all, like, because in my mind, it has to be a second go around because Maggie saw the lone shark, spiky haired guy, Salt Bay some poison into the guy's cup when he wasn't looking. Also, apparently Salt Bay is a bastard towards his employees as restaurants. Go figure. But Kudos says that he saw the waitress sprinkle some poison into the drink. So, And again, the way he described it is the guy took one sip of the coffee and immediately died. Which... I don't know. That just seems like overacting. So who knows, who knows. Meh. Now if what I remember of the incident anyway, is it possible she is the one misremembering things? <laughs> or it could be that. <laughs> but I don't think so. Because th th the entire basis is the Lone Sharks was right around at that table. Maggie, you know you said that everyone else provided test... Ah, excuse me. Body thought it was a fish for a second. Provide a testimony that doesn't match up with what you remember. Yep, and there are just so many things that don't seem to add up. The biggest contradiction is the other guy I saw at the victim's table. He was the one who slipped something into the victim's coffee. I'm sure it was him. But didn't Mr. Kudo testify earlier today that it was the waitress who put something in the white powder? Notice the the hairstyle it's kind of a ends up point let's take a look at beard we'll have to compare that with beard's hairstyle so you really think it was this disappearing man that did it ah maybe no maggie's hairstyle is pointier further up than the uh, the waitress we saw in that flashback granted that's kind of meta gaming to a degree I already, but it's just like, I want to confirm. The game opens up this case of like, ah, evil Phoenix Wright. And then it is an evil Phoenix Wright. Well, he's not the only thing that disappeared. The CD vanished as well. 
You know, the CD with the writing on it. Oh, yeah, the MC Screwdriver album, right? It was MC Bomber, Maya. The name was scrawled on the sports paper as well. They never did find that CD at the crime scene, sir. Or the victim's medication. That's gone missing, too. Ouch, my head. This is getting way too complicated for me. You said that you passed out when the when uh, you said that you passed out when the victim Glen Elg collapsed, right? Yes, it's so embarrassing. I mean, I used to be a cop. Ah, uh, mm, no. It does look like her hair could have been the same hair. It's hard to tell. I still think it begins spiky, like be it begins spiking. Earlier than the the one we saw at the back. We'll have to wait and see. When I came to, the restaurant was buzzing with police. And before I knew what was going on, they arrested me, sir. So between the time the victim collapsed and the time the police arrived at the scene, you have no idea what went on at Tres BN. No, no idea at all. Why is it important, Mr. Wright? The other witness, the old man from the park, was pretty much chased out of the picture. Chased out of the picture? What do you mean? Old Seedy wasn't inside the restaurant because he was told to go call the police. Exactly. And you, Maggie, were unconscious. That means Mr. Armstrong was alone in the restaurant for a brief period of time. No. You don't think Mr. Armstrong set me up, do you? When you consider the facts, it's hard to imagine that Mr. Armstrong isn't involved in this at all. Ah... Uh... It's like the master biting the paw of the dog that it feeds. That's a weird analogy, but it kind of works. <laughs> I guess. Are you sure about this, Mr. Wright? Well, the old man said as much when we spoke with him earlier. I don't know. The things that man says don't add up for some reason, sir. Maggie looks like she's trying to figure something out. Maybe we should ask Maggie exactly what she knows about old Seedy. Which means asking... Is this... What do you know about old tomato fa- I uh, need to present brain. What do you know of this old man? I feel much better after the trial this morning. I've been a bit of a courtroom I've been a bit of a courtroom proceedings addict for years now. It feels like ever si it seems like my brain is melting. It feels like forever since I saw a witness as slippery as that old man. He's not really that bad of an old man though. Still, I feel a bit uneasy. Huh? I thought you just said you felt much better. Maggie, if there's something on your mind, you've got to tell us. Especially if it has anything to do with Mr. Kudo or his testimony. Roger, I'll spill it all and see what you make of it. Is there anything about Mr. Kudo's testimony that stood out as odd to you? Actually, yes. The fact that he was even testifying to begin with doesn't quite... Doesn't quite what? Well, when I took the coffee over to the victim's table... Say that he wasn't there. It's true there was another... Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! The other customer was... Head bandage girl. She was sitting at the table. And probably bashed... Beard over the head or something. Or chloroformed her. Maybe she just passed out. Who knows? But then, yeah, because that would give old uh, loan shark guy a bit of backup. Yeah. Yeah, we know that already. It was Victor Kudo. But I can't really say it was an old man. Okay, then how about calling him a really old middle-aged man? No, age isn't the issue. The other customer was a woman. A woman? Are you sure, Maggie? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. So, what did this woman look like? Um, she was sort of creepy. And she had a kind of cackling laugh. Creepy? Cackling? Why do I get the feeling I've come across a woman like that recently? Well, first things first, we need to, I believe, Gumshoe's lunchbox. Oh yeah, I've got something you're going to love. Really? What is it? A lunchbox, just for you. Here. Wow, a lunchbox. Weenies, too. I can't believe it. Thank you, sir. Did you make this just for me, Mr. Wright? 
Nah, it was Detective Gumshoe. Who else would make such a nice lunchbox for you? Detective Gumshoe? He's really worried about you. Looks like he put a lot of effort into making this, too. I can't accept it. Detention center rules. No gifts allowed, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, you say that. Meanwhile, the evil client we had in the last game's climax just spawned a bottle of Chianti. Just a swirl. Where did he get that? From his hammer space? Gifts have to be allowed here. Hey, come on, Maggie. Don't be like that. The rules are rules. They'll lock you up if you break them. Somehow when an ex-cop turned waitress says that, it seems a whole lot scarier. And anyway, I hate weenies! Oh, really? It's all yours, Maya. You can enjoy it with Mr. Wright. But, but... She's right. It's better than letting it go to waste. But, I guess so. Gumshoe's lunchbox eaten with Maya. Well, how was it? That hit the spot. I love weenies. Oh, good. I'm glad I gave it to you then, sir. Poor man. I'm, <laughs> I can't, don't pick up much information. Let's see. Is this the badge that you saw? Ah, is that your attorney's badge? Actually, it's a fake. Holy smokes, that's it! Huh? That's the badge your phony had, Mr. Wright! You got duped by this? But it's a completely different color. And what about the fact that it's made of paper? He said the badge got a tan as well while he was on Hawaiian business. I'm beginning to see how my phony was able to gain his, her trust. <laughs> a car repair bill paid by D Tiger to the Cadaverini. Oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Cadaverini. Who are the Cadaverinis? Are they dead? I don't think there's anything else that we can show her, but... Maybe we can ask about her apron. Oh yeah, that's from when I was carrying a customer's breakfast over to them. The ketchup splotch, you mean? My whole face was fire engine red thanks to that stuff. But you spilled the ketchup on your apron, didn't you? I don't see how. The ketchup-covered omelet went flying and hit the customer in the face. Alright, so it was... It's not blood, it is ketchup. Oh, t I forget if that was clarified last time. Considering that we've basically confirmed that uh, Mr. Godot is colorblind. I don't... I forget. Was it... Did somebody say that it was ketchup at the trial? I forget. I took a break of brain, so I forget some minor details. Oh, talk about a tomato red face. Makes me wish I could have seen it myself. Yeah, I guess. It was kind of a sight to behold. But I, let's ask about the coffee cup, maybe. That's the cup I took over to the table, sir. <laughs> Pretty sure it's ketchup. <laughs> but you never know. One of these days, ketchup will actually be blood. But I didn't put anything in it. I just... I could never do something like that. That's right, you could never do anything like that. I'm not good at carrying those large trays, you know. Trying to balance a tray with one hand to put something in the coffee with the other, that'd be asking for trouble. I'd drop something for sure. Th that's right. Is she expecting me to claim that she's too clumsy to have committed the crime? I mean, I'm sure that there are, like, worse attempts. But, Your Honor, my, my client is a fool. Hmm. Maybe if we we go to blue screens, we can be like, what is MC Baumer? E-17 Baumer. Do you know what an MC Baumer is? Um, would you mind taking a look at this? I'm sorry, that data is super admin and restricted desktop access power protected. Super admin restricted desktop access power password protected? What? This is madness! No, Maya, this... <laughs> <laughs> this is Sparta! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect... No, Maya, this is Sparta. I didn't expect... 
I, a meme like that to appear in here. <laughs> she won't tell us unless we say the right code word. A code word? Hmm. Sesame! If it's not Sesame, then it must be her mother's maiden name. That's how it always is. There's no point in having a password if it's always the same thing, Maya. I guess she just doesn't want to talk about this. Maybe we should focus on asking about Glen Elg. What did you say? Because we came here first, but... Really? <laughs> I just didn't expect an old meme like that to pop up here. Let's see. MC Balmer. Hmm. Oh yeah! Glenn's Troubles. Maybe? I completely forgot that we had a... A diddly D ready to go here. I guess we can maybe try and break it. Unless we're meant to go to the, like, police station and meet up with uh, Detective Gumshoe, I think we should have all the stuff we need here now. So, how about you tell me what kind of trouble Mr. Elg was in? I'm sorry, sir, but we don't deal with troubleshooting here. Perhaps you'd like to speak to someone in customer service. What's she talking about? I guess we better just ask, take a shot and see where it goes. Miss Basil, let me ask you something. Did Mr. Elk's trouble have something to do with... Hmm. I'm going to assume... Horse racing tickets. What is that? A bunch of horse racing tickets. All losing ones. With that many tickets, you could get one dollar at the recycling. <laughs> Why does everyone just know that off the top of their head? You good people are very, very bad. Cashing in on others' misfortunes is immoral. Is that a whiff of hypocrisy I smell? But what is the relevance of these tickets? The victim, Mr. Glen Elg, he had a gambling habit, didn't he? I don't think that's a logical conclusion based on the facts. Everyone likes to go to the races from time to time. Yeah, but not everyone buys this many tickets. Anyway, I don't believe that proves anything on its own. You're right, but I'm not through yet. Mr. Elg's gambling wasn't restricted to horse races, was it? Hmm. Gambling wasn't restricted to horse races. Lottery ticket? The lottery, horse racing. He bought a lot of tickets and lost a lot of times. That's got to have hurt his wallet pretty bad, don't you think? Maybe bad enough to be a case to be the cause of some pretty serious trouble, perhaps. No! Ah, you are right. Glenn did have a gambling habit. You good people must not follow his example, do you understand? Trust me, even if I wanted to, I don't exactly have the money to buy any. But if you win, there's no tr problem, is there? And Glenn had a winning ticket, didn't he, for half a million dollars? Yeah, but... It's hard to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? But he won that right before he died. So he didn't get to use it. It's true that Mr. Elk won half a million dollars, in the end. But that was his first stroke of good luck. He was in deep trouble before that. Deep trouble? What do you mean? Mr. Elg's real problem was uh, with someone or something more terrifying and ferocious. Is it meet with the diddly dee? We probably don't have all the information, because again, we could probably go to the police station. But we can at least get some practice in on knowing what we need to give. Mr. Elg met with someone on the day he was killed. He even made a note on this calendar about meeting with... About the meeting. Meet with the tiger. What is the relevance of that? Are you trying to suggest Glenn was meeting him to discuss his debt? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. But I've never heard of anyone about the anything about this tiger before. Maybe he's not even human. Maybe he really is a tiger. I'm no programmer, but does she really expect me to buy such messed up logic? In that case, I think it's time to introduce you to the tiger. But we don't have his profile. And I don't think that we have... Paid by a tiger. I don't think we have the information there, so... Nope, we have to leave. Don't think I have enough evidence yet. Yeah. 
more than likely I need the guy's, like, the profile. So let's go to the detention center so that we can then jump to criminal affairs. Yay! We need to come here. So have you been, my guy? Eh, decent enough. Brain has been absolutely trying to murder me. I have been writing a lot more recently. Well, that's nice. I'm trying to draw more. But overall, Brain has been beating me down for the past few days. Weeks. Meh. <laughs> There's a reason I haven't streamed lately. It's because of Brain. I'm trying to fix that. One of these days, maybe I'll load up Fire Emblem Blazing Blade and give that a playthrough. Or at least see how I like streaming it. That's how I like to do things. Give one thing a stream just to feel, get a feel for it. See if I like streaming it. Like streaming the Ace Attorney games? Love it. But sometimes I load up a game and I'm just like, hmm, I think playing it on my own is more fun. <laughs> I've been struggling to be artistic myself. That is relatable. <laughs> Granted, recently, my brain has only been allowed me to be artistic if I give in to my current brain rot. So I've been drawing the puppet from Five Nights at Freddy's because that is my current brain rot. The main server just went up in smokes! Why the heck isn't the press conference set up yet? The superintendent's here already! Yeah, and there's a problem with the internet, too. I already told you to stop using your computer, Chief! But I'm watching videos online! I'm catching up on my Asian soap operas! But Clara, the baby isn't mine! It's gonna have to wait, Chief! I'm throwing the switch! No! Just when some young guy was... <laughs> some young guy was about to confess to his son's hot-to-trot girlfriend. His son's? What? what? That's a soap opera. You've been following Gamescom stuff? I have not. Like, maybe a few things have trickled in through various social medias, but I haven't been just sitting down and catching up on what's been announced or trailers or anything. Uh, lately, the video game industry just hasn't interested me all that much. And I already have so many games that I need to play anyway that <laughs> it's just like I don't want to tempt myself with like current games. I already gave in to the temptation and bought Baldur's Gate 3. And I, uh, I don't need more temptation in my life. <laughs> wow, this place is really buzzing. Something must be going on. Something really big. And while you are tempted by video game announcements and such, remember to stay hydrated. Hey, I bought Baldur's Gate 3 too, and I've only played like four hours of it. Eleven for me. I need to head back and, like, actually investigate things more. And really delve into, like, the mechanics and things. I'm playing a Dragonborn Sorcerer. Because Dragonborn. Mostly because Tabaxi wasn't a choice. <laughs> I've been financially irresponsible. <laughs> Mood. The world. The world is just one big. What is a world? But a bunch of financial is irresponsibility. Huh? What are you doing here, pal? Detective Gumshoe. You can't be here right now. You'll be roped into the briefing if you stay. Huh? We've got big problems here today. Why? What's going on? It's a virus! A virus! A virus? There's a virus ripping through the precinct's computer system! I really need to ask you some questions. I picked up Gale because he's got a sense of humor. Right now, I am... I'm mostly really, like feeling out the characters, but I'm really drawn to Carlock. Big, uh, barbarian demon lady. She is adorable. Okay, I'm only gonna say this once, so listen up. Yes. No matter how poor you get, never borrow money from a place like this, you hear? Um, okay. If you got money trouble, just go on a diet of instant noodles and hang in there. Ah, we're not thinking about borrowing money, detective. We want information. Oh, is that all? Well, let's see. Tender Linda is considered to be even fishier than the average illegal loan shark. And it seems it 
<laughs> Speaking of financial irresponsibility, exactly. That's basically this entire case right now. Phoenix Wright in the case of financial irresponsibility. And it seems it ran into, uh, and it seems it ran into trouble just recently. Those guys have been pretty heavy-handed calling in all their debts. Really? Don't go poking your nose around in that business, pal. You'll really regret it if you upset that lady. All right, I get the picture. Wait a minute. What did he just say? That lady? Who's this lady he's talking about, Nick? We better find out what the story is with this lady. So what exactly is a computer virus, Detective? <laughs> because she's uh, she is from the boonies. She doesn't know what a computer even is. I don't know. What? Look, I just go with the flow, all right, pal? And here I thought detectives were supposed to be somewhat knowledgeable. But what's up that face, pal? You think you know what a virus is? Well, Nick, do you? A computer virus? Sure. I mean, only in simpler terms, of course. Really? Wow, you know everything, Professor Nick. Yeah, I'm gonna call you Dr. Wright from now on. Hey, that sounds pretty cool. Don't you agree, Dr. Wright? Why do I get the feeling they're making fun of me? Okay, fine. I'm no expert, but I can at least explain the basics to the two of you. A virus is a program that gets inside a computer and causes damage. Damage? You mean it makes the machine go boom and explode? No, the damage is, um, well, it's all internal. So the insides go boom, right? Imagine all the case data you've got stored on your PCs here in the station. A virus could wipe out all that. That's the kind of damage I'm talking about. Whoa, that's scary. Yeah, and what... Yeah. Yeah, and what's even more scary is that viruses are infectious. Infectious? Most computers are connected together on a network, right? A virus can move from one machine to another over the network. So the virus just keeps spreading faster and faster. Hmm, just like a real virus, huh? But Nick, why would anyone want to make a program like that? Yeah, it takes ages to type in all that data. Why would you want to destroy it, pal? No, people don't infect their own machines. They send the virus to someone else's. What? That's horrible. Oh, I get it. It's like you're sneezing on Mr. Godot so he catches a cold. Right, then he wouldn't be able to turn up in court because he'd be too sick. You really shouldn't do stuff like that, Nick. It's wrong. I love the expressions on these characters. Who, what, where, when and why did the conversation jump to talking about me? And now my brain is imagining the puppet from Five Nights at Freddy's doing the Phoenix Wright objection pose. Well, that's a drawing idea, I guess. Just earlier, my brain also went, ah, Guilty Gear has the character Jacko. Five Nights at Freddy's has the character Jacko Chica, like Jacko Lantern. What if we smash the two Jackos together? My brain goes places. It is madness sometimes. Anyway, th that's what a computer virus is. A bad program that causes damage. And all the different viruses have names, right? I kind of feel like I've heard the name of the virus we caught somewhere before. The name of the virus, huh? It's not like I've heard of it before, too. It wouldn't happen to be MC Mama, would it? Detective Gumshoe, um, about this. What? I'm trying to concentrate on Maggie and this virus right now, so I- Ah! This is it! This stupid name! I remember now! I thought so. Here it comes. Don't just nod to yourself and keep me in the dark, Nick. What's going on? It's okay, Maya. You don't have to cry about it. <laughs> the name scribbled on the sports paper and written on that CD. That's the name of the virus. MC Bomber! What? Yeah, the virus that just infected every computer of the station, pal! It's MC Bomber! Can you give us any more details, please? I love the music that's playing in the background. I love the music in this series, it's so good! We already knew about the MC Bomber virus for a while back. A group of criminals issued a series of demands to the head honchos of a law enforcement. They threatened to release the virus if their demands weren't met. Who are they? I don't know. Some hot shots from the criminal underworld would be my guess. And now the virus has been released, huh? Yeah. It's in every computer and every public office in the city. Everyone's going nuts! 
They're hopping around like they're dancing at a carnival. All this stuff with criminals and viruses, it almost feels like we're in a sci-fi movie. Apparently, the programmer who made the virus was a real genius or something. The focus right now is on tracing the route of this virus on the black market. You mean someone put this virus up for sale? Yeah, and because this one's so powerful, they're estimating its price tag was in the millions of dollars, pal. In the millions? A virus can be worth that much? Hmm. Do you know anything about the scooter? Hey, are you putting this up for sale, pal? Oh, I skipped over it. I'm a fool. No! Why would you want to bust it up? Why? Would you want a bust it up scooter like this anyway? Yeah, plus the seat's all covered in pigeon poop. Who cares? If it runs, that's all that matters to me. My phony was riding this bike. Maybe if I head back to the park, it'll be there, be there again. We never did find the contents of that bag. It was medicine for Mr. Elg's ruptured eardrum, right? Yeah, we found traces of it in his left ear canal. He must have used it while he was at Trebien. We're sure of that much. Sorry, pal. I can't discuss anything connected to the case. You were literally, uh, well, I guess technically tr uh, the virus isn't connected. Well, no, because he just said that. On the paper, connected to the case. Hmm, I don't know. Hmm. It's gotta give various possibilities. Nope, he doesn't even care about the fake badge. Hmm. I'm guessing that that was our wink wink nudge nudge head on over to Vitamin City again. Hmm. Guess not. Because we already got that one. Hmm. Maybe we need to show something to him. Doesn't care. Do you know anything about this? He does not care. Just going through it and hearing the bum. It amuses me for some reason. Hmm. Well, actually, hmm. I wonder if that update will help us break the, the psych locks. I don't know. Maybe Tender Lender now? I think we looked over everything, so... Oh no! Someone's dropped the ashtray on the floor! That's gonna be a nightmare to clean up! Yeah, it's all over the rug and everything. I actually knocked over a really big space heater once. Cleaning up was such a pain. It was one of those super antiques where you have to burn a ton of charcoal. How did you manage to knock one of those over? Aren't they supposed to be super heavy? Oh hey! There's a book of matches here, too. Matches, huh? Please don't give those out. To, places don't give those out much nowadays. Hey, wait a second. What is it? Book's printed on this cover. It says Tresbien. Ah, more evidence. These matches could come in handy. We might be able to use them. Yeah. The pilot light for the office boiler keeps going out. Swing and a miss, Maya. Swing and a miss. <laughs> Ah, that went on for a long time. Ah! Come out from under the desk, Maya. What are you two snooping around my office for? Nothing. We were just... Oh, my precious carpet! You just got ash on my rug! You're gonna wish your ugly feet never came through my door! It wasn't us. It was already like the... You just wanna argue with me? Is that what you're doing? Think you can take me on? You wanna f 
I'm gonna flatten you two into pancakes and turn you into my new rugs! Ah! Oh. Don Tigre, you're back. Ah, that voice. It's like evil seeping into your head through your ears. When did you bash your head, I want to know. I'm sorry, Don Tigre. Again, it, like it has to be Tigre. I knocked over that ashtray earlier, and... Asher, <coughs> excuse me. I don't know why I sneeze and toes it. Hick, has she got a death wish or what? Oh, right. Huh? Forgot to forget about it, Violetta. It's nothing. What, what, what? <laughs> what, what, what? I ain't gonna get mad at you. You took cute, you hear? That's so unfair! Here, have some cookies. I just baked them. And you'll need some strong espresso while you're discussing your loan. Why are they oddly, evilly wholesome with each other? Gwah! Phoenix Wright! Yes? You see the crazy are just plain stupid to chase after me. I worked so hard, but now you've got to come and mess up my plan. So it was him. He's my phony. Heh, <laughs> but I don't care. No one gets in my way. B what? I mean, excuse me? <laughs> you should have left the little girl at home, right? Um, I have a few things I want to... Ah! No questions! This is the last time we meet! Wait, please! That was pretty weak, Nick. You waited until he was out of earshot before you shouted after him. Like you're one to talk, I didn't hear you scream hold it either. The espresso. Ah! And cookies. This woman is definitely not good for my heart. Now, what was it that Tiger called her? Violetta? And now we get to talk to her. Oh, because I missed a diddly 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 diddly. So we don't have his name, but we do have Violetta. Possibly part of the staff at Tinder Linder, a thoroughly bitter person. So, I'm kind of curious about your company, Tender Linder. With the warm and friendly atmosphere you'd expect from a family-sized business, a conscientious rate of interest, and an attractive repayment policy. Why do I get the feeling this sentence is not going to end well? We will tenderly lend you that little bit of extra here at Tender Lender. Hey, Nick, things are a bit tight for Wright Co. at the moment, aren't they? I mean, there's that $500 you owe me from our card game for starters. Why did you take out a loan? Would I take it out a loan from a place like this? Not so much. Tender Lender is on your side. <laughs> So, um, let's say I'm late with my repayment. What happens then? We'd give you more coffee. Strong coffee. Um, right. I think I'd rather skip town. Hey, just remember I can make strong coffee too, Nick. Strong tea as well. So, um, do you know, uh, about that incident we're investigating? What incident? Well, a man was poisoned in a restaurant just near here. That incident. Let me see. I was here that day with the manager. The manager being the tiger? Furio Tigre. Furio? He does he does look like an Oni like more chiseled jawline phoenix. So that's where the tiger thing comes from. Zinniop's got a real name, Nick! Hurry up and find out more about him! I still love that. Zinyop. Can I ask you about the tiger? I mean, Mr. Tigre. Cookie? Sure. <laughs> How do you like my cookies? I baked them myself. Hehehe. <laughs> Go ahead, Nick. The honor's all yours. No, no. Ladies first, Maya. Hehehe. <laughs> no matter how I look at this, I just don't get it. What are the tiger and the scary girl doing working together? We are lovers. That's not exactly coming across in your tone of voice. And I owned on Tigre my life. He's the one who saved me. That would be hilarious if he actually was an evil Phoenix Wright. 
and somehow saved th this lady, and she's like an evil Maya. I would find that hilarious. The tiger saved you. Please address him properly as Don Tigre. Otherwise, I'll have to. Okay, okay, Don Tigre. Of course, I'm sorry. He saved her life? I'd sure like to know how that happened. I'm very frail, you see. Just recently, I died once. Hee <laughs> hee. You d died? About four months ago. The doctor said to abandon all hope. I guess they were expecting her to take a boat ride across the river Styx. But Don Tigre, he saved me. He gave up everything. Everything? When I found out what he had done for me, I was happy. No offense, but I'm finding that a little hard to believe. I decided I'd pay him back with my life by serving him coffee and espresso. Isn't espresso just a different kind of coffee? I still wonder about what's in her coffee. So, is that why you've got that bandage around your head? <laughs> this? Um, so what's the story with the bandage? They put it on after the operation. Four months ago? Operation? It's just a little injury. A little fatal injury. <laughs> a f fatal injury? Mai just suffered one herself by the sound of it. So that's the injury you were talking about before when you said you had died once. Another psychic Jesus! This is all very weird. This is all very strange. I don't know where things are going. I don't know where things are going. <laughs> I just, I don't, I don't know. This is weird. Ah, she really creeps me out, Nick. Same here, but we've got to find out the truth. I don't think we have information to break these. I do not think so. I'm just trying to think, would we? Hmm. Well, let's go back to Vitamin Square. We'll run about everywhere. Hmm. The only other thing I know that we're missing is the other Dilly D. Let's see, are you here, Mr. Armstrong? No, you little bitch, fine, we'll be back. Maybe blue screens now? Because we did upgrade the MC Bomber virus while we had it upgraded to be a virus, so. Let's try again. We'll skip ahead. He had troubles with his horse gambling. Which apparently is a huge industry in Japan. Horse races. Skip ahead to... The Lutery Checkout. The winning ticket for half a million dollars. Start to imagine how he could have been in trouble then, isn't it? In the end. Hmm. Real problem. I think we can now give Don Tigre as the answer. Furio Tigre, the boss of a loan office called Tender Lender. Tender Lender? People with businesses should think harder before naming their offices. Like, you're one to talk! Their business is literally called Blue Screen Inc. Something bi Come to us if you want your computer to die. Well, what do you think? Our firm is doing very well at the moment. I don't think we need to borrow money. No, no, no. I mean about Mr. Elg. You think El uh, Glenn had something to do with this Furio Tigre? Yes. I'm sorry, I don't know any connection between the two of them. Really, because I've got proof that Mr. Elg and the Tiger knew each other. Which I do believe should be this here calendar. Furio Tigre, aka the Tiger, is the boss of the loan office called Tender Lender. This is who Mr. Elg met on with the uh, met with on the day of his murder. 
and the only thing a loan shark would talk with him about would be his debt. No! It's true that Glynn had racked up quite a bit of debt from his gambling habit, about $100,000, I think, and that explains what the $100,000 is marked as. But what with the bomb next to the 500000 Huh. A hundred thousand dollars? Ouch! How do you even go that in debt for gambling? But I heard he won the lottery, so he should have been in the clear. How do you hear he won the lottery and that he died and not realize that that meant nothing? Shame Maggie couldn't get a bit of good luck. Okay. So the guy got lucky and won the lottery. But what if he hadn't won? What was his plan then? Well, this isn't easy to say, but He said he would use his talents to repay the money. His talents? I suspect he was talking about programming. But what computer program is worth a thousand dollars? hundred thousand dollars? Perhaps you good people should leave so I can get back to work? I'm so close to cracking her. The program in question. Wasn't it by any chance... This? Well, this is it, isn't it? This is the virus that's infecting computers worldwide as we speak. MC Balmer! No! Huzzah! Glenn's head. Why did it feel like her, like, conversation string went faster than others? <laughs> Glenn's head. Glenn's head. Glenn's head had more processing power than any computer, but it had been infected with a gambling virus. Glenn was in too deep. You mean he was in debt? Yes, a hundred thousand dollars in debt. Not an easy amount to repay. So. He said he was taking on some extra work, something a bit risky. Risky? How? Maybe he was going to become a waitress at Tres Bien. Where do you come up with these ideas? So it's safe to say Mr. Elg was the creator of this virus, huh? The MC Bomber virus? Yes. It was a work of genius, in a bad sort of way, of course, but still genius. Something like that would probably fetch several million dollars on the black market. And he was such an idiot, he was willing to sell it for a hundred thousand. Inconceivable! Gumshoe was right for a change! This date, December 3rd, that is marked on this calendar. That was his deadline for repaying his debts. MC Bomber updated the court record. A computer virus made by Glen Elg, potentially worth millions. I guess we won't be needing these horse racing tickets anymore. Is she gonna say... <laughs> is she gonna say, But Nick, the one dollar recycling! Here's the trash can, Nick. <laughs> um, would you take... I'm sorry, but... It, nope. <laughs> Again, Sparta. What? Oh. For a moment, it just stood there. So it's like, what's happening? Hmm... But that feels like we are out of things to talk about. Maybe if we talk about... About Mr. Elg. He was a top programmer. I wouldn't say he was a genius. He suffered from one or two bugs in his personality. A bit of a loser. That's what got him in trouble. He was a top programmer. <laughs> he was really a model employee. We already know the trouble. Hmm. Are you in the kitchen now, Armstrong? No. Hmm. We'll jump around, but I don't know. Ba -ba 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 -ba. We'll quickly jump around everywhere else. I guess first things first, detention center. And maybe to the criminal affairs. Maybe if we present it to him again? Nope, doesn't care. Do you know of Tigre? Oh, this guy, the tiger. Is he famous? Yeah, this guy's not a loan shark, you know. Nope, he's a big loan cat. Hence the name? Don't pay him back and you'd be able to say your prayers, because he'll eat you alive. You're shaking, detective. Like a leaf. 
I'm just, you know, kind of on edge at the moment, if you know what I mean. What about her? Do you know her? That's the girl who works over at Tindalinda. Linda. You want to stay away from her, okay? I mean it. She does look kind of unforgiving, doesn't she? That should be the least of your worries, pal. What's that supposed to mean? What could be worse? Her name's... Cadaverini? A car repair bill for $15,000 paid by Tigre to the Cadaverini family. He got into an accident with her. And that's what led to her once death. And then for some reason, he paid for it and the car repair bill. That's weird. Okay. She's the only granddaughter of Bruno Cadaverini. Who looks like a very dangerous person. Bruno Cadaver... Bruno Cadaverini? Do you know who that is, Nick? Never heard of him. Bruno Cadaverini's the boss of the Cadaverini family. The Cadaverini's? That's one scary sounding name. We can't... we can't touch them. They're way too powerful for the police. But you're thinking of taking them on, aren't you? But no, I don't remember ever saying I was going to. Better get some more info out of Gumshoe about this family. I'm not sure if I really want to get involved in this, but who are the Cadaverinis? Who are they? A scary bunch of people, that's who! You're a cop, and you're scared? What's that about? Trust me, if it doesn't matter if you're a cop or a kid or a cop, these guys are scary! They've got some serious clout in the criminal underworld. We can't touch them. They've got too much moolah. Moolah? As in, they pretty much control all the cash on the city's black market. The black market, huh? And that includes Tender Linda, I take it. Sure, no one stands up to Bruno Cadaverini, and I mean no one. Interesting. So Viola is the granddaughter of some mafia boss then? Yeah, and everyone knows how much Bruno loves his little girl. She means everything to him. So that's why uh, a Tiger, Furio, is like so kind to her. Because if he doesn't, he'll be killed. So, how did she end up at that Tinder Lender? I don't know, pal. But I heard she and the boss of Tinder Lender are pretty tight. Tight? That's what it said in a file I read related to Maggie's case. Sounds like a pretty important clue. Ah, I can't believe it! I almost forgot about the most important thing! And that is? You know, the lunchbox! How did everything go? Lunchbox? You remember, the weenies? I hate weenies! Oh yeah, those weenies. So, how did my weenies taste when they went down the hatch? Huh? Um, well, it was delicious. Yeah, that's what she said? Really? Um, well, not exactly. Don't worry about it, pal. I figured something would happen, so I came prepared. Prepared? What do you mean? I made a jumbo lunchbox. Oh. Do me a favor again, pump out and deliver this. It sure is heavy burden, in more ways than one. I can just imagine Maggie's little eyes sparkling with joy when you bring her that. Weenies again, Nick. Tell me we don't have to eat all these too. <laughs> I really can't eat anymore. Hilarious. But I wonder if I can then present like a uh, repair bill then. Nope, there's nothing to say about Furio being in debt to the ladies. Ah, she's gone. I can't believe it. They killed our dear girl. Nope, is still gone. Then I guess the only real thing left would be Tender Linder again. Hmm. What do you think of this job listing? About this. More coffee? You must have more. No, um, thanks. I've had enough. Really? I'm so thirsty. 
I don't leave the coffee. Uh, but I don't leave the coffee. I don't leave the office. I can't tell you about anything except Don Tigre. Uh, loan contract? Nope. Hmm. Meeting. Maybe I can throw in Elg? Nope. Doesn't care about him. Higgledy piggledy higgledy blah. Let's see. Uh, repair bill? Nope. I guess I could actually, like, present the Magatama and try to break her Cyclops. Would you like the lunchbox? Nope. That would be hilarious. Hello, evil lady. Would you like a lunchbox? Well, let's see if we can break her Cyclops. You said that bandage around your head was from an operation. You also said you suffered a fatal injury to the head, correct? Yes, the operation was very difficult, apparently. Now, by fatal injury, you mean you were hurt very badly somehow, right? <laughs> Did the injury in question have something to do with... That would be hilarious if it was actually the scooter. Because it's either the scooter... Yeah. Oh. Well. Donuts? Huh? I baked them myself. Homemade donuts. Have one. Um, what's inside? Jam and... I'm sorry, but I didn't quite catch that. Hee <laughs> hee. Um, thanks, but no thanks. I think I'll pass. What happened to this woman for her to have such a huge bandage around her head? Oh, I got an achievement? Violetta's homemade donuts. Get a donut offered to Phoenix. Okay. That only, that makes it more ominous. Um, then maybe it's the repair bill? Then again, if it was an accident with a car and that little dinky moped, I don't think it would have been that bad. I have your car repair bill. From this, it seems pretty obvious that this car was involved in an accident. Let me see that. This bill is made out to the Cadaverinis? Yes, it is. I don't think I ever introduced myself. Tell me, what do the Cadaverinis have to do with me? Something tells me she's not about to say hi and introduce herself. All right, then. Your relationship with the Cadaverinis is very strong, and do I... Is it... Hopefully the game will be nice and allow you to show either Bruto Cadaverini or Viola, but I'm going to say him. I know exactly who you are, Viola Cadaverini. You sustained that injury in a traffic accident, didn't you? It happened about four months ago. I was driving in one of our family's cars when someone pulled out in front of me. It really was the guy. I was, it was a motorbike, or something like that. I don't remember it much. Anyway, I swerved to try and avoid it, but... I took a blow to the head. A bad one. Yeah, I can imagine. So what happened to the person on the bike? I'm guessing they didn't get away with it injuring THE Viola Cadaverini, right? I don't know what happened to them. They ran away, or so I heard. Ran away? If they'd stayed, I'd have... <laughs> hmm, is it possible? Could the person who committed the hidden run have been... Furio Tigre! It was this man, wasn't it? He was the one who caused your accident. It wasn't Don Tigre. I refuse to believe it. Wow, that was, that was much faster. We collided, the motorbike in my car. But Don Tigre isn't injured at all, is he? It was the Tiger who caused Viola to crash. I can feel it. It's one of their her locks just broke, so she must suspect it was him too. I'm sorry, Miss Cadaverini, but I have proof that the Tiger was involved in the tragic accident on his bike. Uh, do I just present his bike again? Because it's either the bike, since it's all smashed up, or it is the repair bill. 
Uh, hopefully did it. It's not exactly a motorbike, but Mr. Tigre rides around on a scooter, doesn't he? And you'll notice that the front wheel guard is badly damaged. Miss Cadaverini? You know the truth, don't you? <laughs> this repair bill was paid by Furio Tigre. The Cadaverinis have known for ages who caused the accident, haven't they? It's possible, perhaps. Somewhere inside me, I know that may be true. I knew it. But Don Tigre still saved my life. The operation was very complicated. It was very expensive. How much are we talking? Very, very, very expensive. She seems kind of hesitant about giving an actual figure. I should back off. Well, anyway, it was the Tiger who paid for it, right? After I recovered, Don Tigre told me. He said he paid for the operation because he cared about me. I believe him. Really? But do you honestly believe that to be true? You want to know what I think? I think the reasons he paid for the operation wasn't because of you, but someone else. And that someone else would have to be Bruto, because he's such a scary dude. And Furio probably was already in the underground, in the black market area. So it's possible that he already had some dealings with the Cadaverinis. So I'm going to say he did because he's scared. Perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but your grandfather, Bruto Cadaverini, controls a lot of dubious cash, right? And you are his beloved pride and joy. Sure, I don't know exactly how much the operation cost, but if you weren't the granddaughter of Mr. Cadaverini, do you think Mr. Tigre would have paid the money? One million dollars. This is actually kind of sad in a way. Four months ago, I was in a traffic accident. That's why I needed the operation. When I woke up, they told me it was so nothing serious. A simple procedure. Oh, really? Well, I guess if she recovered in four months, it couldn't have been too big. They said the operation cost one million dollars. A, a, a million bucks? My grandfather ordered Don Tigre to pay it. One million dollars in compensation. Compensation, huh? It's underworld lingo for paying money to settle a score. Basically, pay or get put into some serious trouble. But a million bucks? This has to be related to our poisoning case somehow. I wanted to believe him. I wanted to trust what Don Tigre said. He said it had nothing to do with my grandfather being Bruto Cadaverini. I wanted to believe he helped me because he cared about me, not about my grandfather. This is actually kind of sad. But I knew that wasn't really true. Sure, she threatened Armstrong by, like, setting his place on fire, I think. But, like, I don't know. Armstrong is kind of a weirdo, so why not? And he did steal a one dollar lottery ticket, so he's obviously the worst kind of person. But I knew that wasn't really true. Wow, I'm so sorry. What he did to get the money was, it was evil. He said it was all for me, so I, I helped him. You helped him? In what way? Here, take these. What are these? Medical papers? I'm Bruto Cadaverini's granddaughter. He had to pay compensation. He was made an offer. He simply couldn't refuse. Huh. A one million dollar bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. Wow. I feel so bad for Viola. It's inexcusable, huh? There are two things that I consider inexcusable. Poisoning and betrayal. Only a coward would hurt people using either of these tactics. Is everything alright, Nick? 
We should get going. Right after we finish our espresso. Yeah. I won't need to convince Viola of anything else, so I guess I can get rid of these. Repair bill thrown in the trash. That's actually kind of sad. Again, she did threaten Armstrong. But at the same time, she could have been doing it like... For... Don Tigre, and she lives basically in the underworld life because she's part of the Cadaverinis. So it's like... Then again, she did kind of have emphasis on it was evil. She could also be fucking with us. Who knows? Well, let's see if Armstrong is up. Oh, I'm Armstrong. You here, boy? Uh, bonjour. I've been waiting for you to return. No, you haven't. We've been through here like five million times. Mr. Armstrong. Ah, good timing. I was hoping to find you here. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, he hasn't got anything to say to you, fellas. Ah, it's Zinyop. Who are you calling Zinyop? Ah! Come out from under the table already, Maya. Okay, hand it over. But what? You just want to play games with me? I don't recommend that. The medical papers. Now! Uh-oh. I think he wants Viola Cadaverini's papers back. You mean this? The million dollar medical papers? Miss Cadaverini trusted you. That's why she said that she helped you. Forget about it! That girl's dumber than an eggplant! You just wanna know what's sad? I'll tell you what's sad! And it ain't only her face! She thinks she's got power because she's Bruno's little girl. Now that's sad. I can't let you have these papers. Tomorrow in court, I'm going to expose what you did to get one million... To get the one million you used to pay this off. Are you crazy or something? I don't care if you want to give it to me or not. There's two of us here. Two, got that? Two. Two. Uh, we, we, we. Mr. Armstrong? Forgive me, dear Sule. I cannot argue with him. I can't believe we got beat up by that man. God, that really hurt. Is that all you got? I'll be taking those papers now. Armstrong, get that lighter. But wait, don't take too, don't take it too hard. Phoenix, right? That was so stupid. I shouldn't. I've let my guard down. Those medical papers were vital evidence. Hold it, pal! Hey, he's to the rescue! Detective Gumshoe? Detective? You think you're gonna stop me, copper? Beat it! Whoa! C come on, Gumshoe, keep it together! You guys, get out of here! Leave this guy to me! But... Go, pal, and take this! If you get hurt, who's gonna look after Maggie, huh? Alright, thanks, Gumshoe! Wait, Nick, don't leave me behind! That's the second time that Gumshoe has saved us. Oh, thank you very much, Esper Magic, for the raid! <laughs> right now, we got a Big Damn Hero's Dick Gumshoe for the second time, and it seems like he always jumps in when we're being hassled by underworld criminal types. I find that hilarious. I want that to happen more. Once a game, Phoenix gets cornered by some underground uh, black market criminals, then Gumshoe comes to save the day. I'll get even with that guy tomorrow. In court! Tinder Linder is going down! I wonder if we, like, surely then... Like, Don Tigre should be, like, held accountable for, like, assault at the very least, you think? But hey, neat. We'll go on a little bit. Maybe do at least one... Bop, 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 at least one, like, round of interrogation, cross-examination. Maybe two. Let us see and feel it all out. Good morning, Mr. Wright. Good morning, Maggie. 
So, what do you think this is uh, think is going to happen today, sir? Yesterday's session didn't go so well and ended on a giant mystery. That's true. We still haven't solved a single part of it yet. Are you okay, Nick? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. I saw that, the little flash of doubt in your eyes! No! That, was, no, that wasn't doubt, that was, uh, determination! Why don't I believe you? <laughs> it's nearly time, Maggie. You better get going to the defendant's seat. Roger, don't let me down, Mr. Wright. I'm counting on you. Hey, pal! Hey, Detective Gumshoe. Quit stressing Maggie out! She doesn't need that! How did you know she was stressed? I was watching through the doorway. Oh. You look like you lost the case already. Show a bit of confidence, will you, pal? Here, maybe this'll help you. Huh? Have you taken aromatherapy too? Not in a million years, pal. Don't tell me you don't remember this thing. I almost did forget about it. Come to think of it, that doesn't look like one of the, those aromatherapy bottles. This is a small bottle that turned up in Tresbian's kitchen a couple of days ago. Wow, look at all these little bottles. Oh, they're aromatherapy oils. He's got so many, they're overflowing onto the floor. Hey, wait a minute. There's one bottle that's different from all the others. Well, what do you know? It doesn't have a label either. And is it chloroform? No, it can't be. It doesn't smell. I don't know. Maybe it was used to knock out Maggie? Because, again, my leading theory is... My leading theory is Don Tigre met with El, uh, Glen Elg at Tresbien because Tresbien was in debt to Tenderlinder. And once Glen Elg won the lottery, he was going to back out of selling MC Bomber to Don Tigre. So he poisoned Glen Elg who died, and more than likely, Armstrong, somebody must have knocked out Maggie, so she passed out. Viola then dressed up in a maid's outfit and pretended to poison Don Tigre, who dressed up as Glen Elg, because Kudos was there. And they knew Kudos was going to be there so they could use Kudos as a patsy. And then frame Maggie. That's my leading theory. That's my going theory. Because we know that he didn't know Maggie by face. So I feel like the double happening event could be real. We finally got the analysis results back from the lab. So what is it? Is it the poison? I'm afraid not, pal. It's... M M of course, because the bastard Armstrong steals tiny things. He stole the medication. It's medication. Medication? Yeah, for ears. Topical use only, apparently. For ears? You mean... Yeah, it's the medication Glen Elg was using for his ruptured eardrum. What was Glen Elg's ear medicine doing in the kitchen? Small bottle refiled in the court record. The victim's ear medicine found covered in unidentified fingerprints in the kitchen. Um, what about the unidentified fingerprints? Anything on that? Someone screwed up, so they only had time to analyze the contents of the bottle. Another hour and they might have gotten something on the prints, but... That's gonna be weak in its impact as a piece of evidence. I'm okay, pal. This is it. Make sure your defense is impregnable today, got it? Today's trial... I'm going to expose that guy for what he's done, or my name isn't Phoenix Wright. I wonder how Godot is going to act today. I was going to try and make some kind of, I don't know, word play on Godot and today, but it didn't work. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Beard. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Ready and waiting as always, Your Honor. Very good. Then we'll get underway at once. Yesterday we heard of testimony of Mr. Victor Kudo. He claims to have witnessed the defendant putting powder into the victim's coffee. However, the witness's testimony was plagued with a number of problems. The marks on the rim of the cup show that the victim drank from it with his right hand. 
But according to the old man's testimony, he picked it up with his left. Thank you, Mr. Godot. Furthermore, according to the witness's account, the victim was listening to the radio with an earpiece in his left ear. Yet the victim's left eardrum was ruptured, which made him effectively deaf in that ear. It's amazing how many contradictions a single case can have, huh, Nick? Ha. Huh. Allow me to enlighten you, Your Honor. The world you see keeps turning, and we must turn with it. You've lost me already, Mr. Godot. Don't let the mysteries of yesterday mystify you today. Only losers think like that. You've got to change with the times. That's one of my rules. Are you implying that you've resolved these contradictions? You know the answers to these questions? The old guy wasn't just throwing seed in here. He was throwing us off the scent. And today I'll prove it. Very well. Let the first witness take the stand. This traitorous motherfucker! The... The, the, the bastard! The monster man! He, was, he beat us up! Man, you are... Oh, bonjour, everyone. I am Jean Armstrong, the owner and head chef of Le Trebia Restaurant Enchanté. Bash him down, everyone. Forgive me for asking, witness, but are you a woman? Well, I guess the judge. He's gender inclusive. He sees somebody with a beard and mustache, but he's just like, well, to be on the safe side, let me make sure. Oh la la, monsieur. As you can see, I'm le pair and perky gentleman. No? Uh, um. On the day of the incident, you were in Tresbian's kitchen. Isn't that right? Who is you, monsieur? Everything feels right. He's already down to his second cup. Huh. <sighs> wow, he's totally unfazed. Doesn't anything intimidate this guy? Being colorblind, apparently. Very well. Your testimony, please, witness. We didn't even get his name or uh, occupation. Please tell the court what happened that day at Tresbian. We volunteers. I've, I'm terrible with his voice. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. I remember I was experimenting with some new art decals that day. Like having a large mirror between the tables, for example. What? Oui, perhaps that is what the old man was looking at. The cup, the pierce, and the glasses, they would have seen everything in reverse, none. No? I don't think so, you dumb. Uh, but... MIRROR?! Oui, and grand mirror. The most enormous mirror. That's stupid. And suddenly the mystery disappears. Like I said, the world keeps turning, so roll with it. Hmm, that would explain the coffee cup and the earpiece conundrum. The mirror would have made everything appear back to front. What the heck? It's way too early in the morning for this to be happening to me. Now then, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. When it all happened, there were just two customers in my restaurant. You lying motherfucker! And who were the two customers exactly? My, of course, the young man who died, and the other not so young man. Hmm, you are referring to yesterday's witness, I presume. What about the other man Maggie saw at the table? Something tells me Mr. Armstrong isn't planning to disclose his existence. We need some hard evidence first before we can bring him up, don't we? Guess I'll just have to try a different approach for the time being. 
I remember I was experimenting with some new art deco that day. You're experimenting with art deco? How oh, come I never heard about that before today? You are not familiar with the language of interior design, Monsieur? Please stay on topic. Now, why didn't you tell the court about this before? But I did, just a few moments ago. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Armstrong. This deco you mentioned. Are you referring to some sort of de decature? No, no. Art deco is just a style of design, Your Honor. He's talking about interior design. Walls, ceilings, carpets, that kind of thing. Ah, uh, yes, of course. That deco. I was trying to achieve a more la feminine look for my restaurant. I was planning the most bold remodeling of Le Deco. Like having a large mirror. Then where is it, you bitch? How big of a mirror are we talking about here? Buff, something about four meters wide and a wee about two meters high. Four meters. That's 12 feet long. That's... 12 feet long, 6 feet high. You wouldn't even be able to see around it. Let's see if 1 meter is about 1 yard. Holy glass in a frame, that's huge. I was intending to install it on the ceiling eventually. The ceiling? Is there a mirror on the ceiling? I don't remember. There's none, but I decided not to go through with it in the end. What should I do? Should I ask him more about the mirror or not? It depends, because he's obviously lying to us, so maybe if we asked about the mirror more, it would maybe put him in a corner? Let's press harder. If you really had such a large mirror in the restaurant, someone would have noticed it. But there's nothing about a mirror in Mr. Kudo or Maggie Beard's testimonies. But... You didn't ask, Trat. You have only yourself to blame for such sloppy work. What? A mirror was delivered to Tresbian the day before the incident. Really? As Mr. Armstrong testified, he was carrying out some design changes. And as it turned out, he didn't actually use the mirror in the end. This just doesn't add up. Even if a mirror was delivered to Tresbian, it doesn't prove that it was in the restaurant on the day of the crime. Huh. If you want to doubt someone, Shrat, look in the mirror. I'm sure this person looking back at you will be dubious enough. Hmm, so the witness yesterday had seen the victim reflected in a mirror. We oui, perhaps that was what le Le. Normally, I'd expect people to know the difference between a reflection and a real object. Normally. How does normality come into this? And that's lame, Shrat, even for you. Huh? Are you trying to say that if something isn't normal, it isn't possible? Is that it? Where does that... Where does that leave the pokey headed lawyer and the top-knot chick over there? And the ungodly cool guy with the mask over here? Well, Trot! Ah! Not the hair! I do not have a top-knot! Mr. Godot is correct. A lack of normality is no basis for discounting an argument. Oh, but if I come up with something crazy, I have to prove five billion things. Bien, logic is one le day. La couple a piece la glasses, it would have seen everything in reverse, non? Everything? He would have seen everything in reverse. Oui. Hey, Nick, we should take a second and think about what old CD said in his testimony. How did he phrase it again? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question, you can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear, without a doubt. And then he used the same hand to pick up his cup, his left hand. If he saw everything he described reflected in the mirror, then everything he said uh, he saw on the left was actually the right, huh? And that clears up all the problems with his testimony, I guess, or does it? Huh. It's kind of hard to believe everything's the fault of a mirror, but... Do you think old CD saw everything through a refraction? Let's quickly see. Because... If he saw everything... Hmm...
is left. But then that would mean that his eyepiece would be on a, his opposite eye. Because right now, it's on his left eye. And that is what he claimed. That's what Kudo claimed. So, if it was flipped due to being a mirror, that would be uh, off. If he did, it would explain all the contradictions in his testimony. But that just makes the situation worse for Maggie. There's got to be something that the old man's testimony. We've just got to dig deeper. Hmm. I just wonder. What do I need to do? Probably present the guy's profile, right? Because that's where his earpiece thingy thing is placed. So I would say... The coffee cup, the earpiece, and the HMD. Let's think back over Mr. Kudo's testimony for a second, shall we? The boy was wearing the earpiece on the same side as the green lens of his specs. No question. You can lock me up if I'm wrong. It was his left ear without a doubt. So, to summarize, we were told both the HMD and the earpiece were on the victim's left side. Now, if Mr. Kudo saw all, saw all that as a reflection in the mirror, it means both the HMD and the earpiece were actually on the victim's right side. Exactly, you see, Monsieur. Now that you think about it, it is not so odd, non. Unfortunately, that's where we run into a monumental contradiction with the facts. If Mr. Kudo really did see everything in a mirror, why is it that the HMD is now on the wrong side of his head? Order! Order! Mr. Wright is correct! If the witness genuinely observed the victim reflected in a mirror, then we would expect the victim's eyepiece to be over his right eye. I said that weird because I am a fool. Objection. How are you going to object to that? How bitter. Tried you should have a taste of this bitterness. It'll calm you down in no time. Are we talking about your coffee or something completely different? You don't understand the way the witness thinks. How he thinks? You remember this, I presume? The I broke the vase. Sorry, apology. Le I mean, Mr. Kudo's sworn testimony. Exactly. The old man has one very grievous habit over than, other than throwing seeds. The more of an impression something makes, the more muddled his mind makes it. And what's the most striking thing about Mr. Elk? Clearly, it's the victim's eyepiece. And that's my point. The old man strikes again. Mr. Elg's HMD made a big impression on the old man. I saw the earpiece in those newfangled spectacles he was wearing. Oh, yes, they were both on his left ear, do you hear? His left ear. So you're going to say that he was right about everything except the one thing that matters? Ha! Huh. Well, trite. Uh-huh. That's the worst but best impression of Kudo ever. Wow, I really thought he was old CD for a moment there. Kudo's good. Enough! I must agree that yesterday's witness was irresponsibly rash in much of his testimony. Bad luck, Nick. Looks like the one the boil of contradiction you found is just a rash. A mirror can't be beaten by a handful of seeds, nor can it lie. So what exactly was the old man looking at? Fill us in, Mr. Armstrong. Go on, tell the court where all he is. Oui, I can explain, please, if you will look at the plans of the restaurant. Yeah, show us exactly how it was set up. So that we can know. Hello, is everyone sitting comfortably? The mirror it was in the middle of the restaurant, dividing the two in halves. There is... But then that means that... But the guy said he was across from him, though. And this means that the other guy could have also... Huh. That was the seat that was the table next to the victims. That was where the old man was sitting. After the terrible incident occurred, I moved the mirror so it was not in the way. 
But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Hmm, I see no problems with the explanation we have just heard. From the table next to the victims, Mr. Kudo could have seen the victim in the mirror. What a naughty little cocker. I am confusing all the men like this. Don't worry about it. We can keep up, except for the guy breaking out in a cold sweat over there. Ah, uh, I hate that guy! You said you didn't touch anything else apart from the mirror. Are you quite sure of that? Voltaire's, of course! I think I could bring out the medicine on that one. But let's share. A bit this. Hmm. We'll press on everything and then see what we want to give. Mirror was in the middle, cutting it in halves. So run this by me again. The mirror was here. Okay, this is basically just the way to remind you where the mirror is. We really? Because I know if I were you, I wouldn't have put a mirror there. It would be in the way. Look who's talking, Shrite. Huh? You're obstructing my view, among other things. But, 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 this is my seat in the courtroom. Tresbian's charm is what it, is that it gives you the impression that you're the only customer. Temporarily placing a mirror in that spot would hardly be in the way. Unlike you, Trite. I tell you, Monsieur, the mirror was there in the middle of the restaurant. Remember to stay hydrated while Godot gaslights you. There's only one seat from which you could see the image of the victim, except the one straight across. And where would that be? Oh la la, look how you lean towards me. I always attract the younger boys. Maybe I should keep you in suspense a little longer. Mr. Armstrong, tell the court what you saw at once. Or know at once. I attract the older ones too, you know, handsome. Shall I tease you too? <laughs> I'm already seeing a very hot someone, so I'm afraid you'll be waiting for a long time. I bet she has mocha cream skin and cappuccino perfume. Perfume? Perfume. Bien, I will tell you, there was only one seat from which you could have seen. Let's keep pressing, let's keep pressing. So why can you only see the victim from that particular seat? Mas, Monty, is it obvious, none? If you look at the plans, you'll understand. The victim would have been reflected in the mirror like so. If you are sitting at the table next to him, you would see everything, none. So that's the old, uh, the seat, old seat he was sitting in the, that day. When the poisoning happened. The old man was sitting at the table next to the victim. Why does this seem kind of odd? Because he said that he was across the uh, restaurant from him. Did you move the mirror while Mr. Kudo was off calling the police? We, oui, exactly, Mom. I carried it out of the restaurant then. You moved a huge mirror like that all by yourself. What can I say? I know how to pick things up, Anson. <laughs> Kudo actually laughed at something. Well, given the witness's physique, I suppose it is possible. Do you move anything else from the crime scene, Mr. Armstrong? I, lo I look like the obliguing type, none. But naturally, I did not touch anything else. Are you sure about that? I touched nothing except the mirror. Mr. Wright, is there something the witness has said that doesn't match the crime scene? Yeah, there is. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. Ha! Ah, suffering from a case of heartburn, Mr. Trite? Oh, I have just the thing for that. An oil with golden myrrh and frankincense. Add a few drops of to your coffee and voila. Enjoy. Focus, Phoenix. Breathe. I just need to ignore these two and find some evidence. It is pretty strange, though, isn't it? I mean, nobody mentioned anything about a really large mirror. You'd think someone would have, but Maggie didn't, and neither did old Seedy. And the only logical explanation is that there was no mirror inside Tresbian that day. There was no mirror in Bossing, say. Now I've just got to prove it. One idea that I have, we need that uh, floor plans.
and then the crime scene photo. Wouldn't the mirror have been in his way ever so slightly? Because if he came out of the kitchen and that's what he was supposedly saw, the mirror would have been in the way. Because let's see again. From near the kitchen. Hmm. But which one... That is the seed that... Und hmm. Because the, the, the three things that I feel are important is one, I feel like the mirror would have gotten in his way of seeing what happened when he came out of the kitchen. Kudo said that he was sitting at a different table and the medicine was found in the kitchen and he stole it. So I just wonder what we need to do. Hmm. I believe... Let's see. Was in the middle of the restaurant. There was only one seat. That was... Uh, a victim was... An old man was sitting. Hmm. After the terrible incident, I moved the mirror. Didn't touch anything else. Hmm. A mirror was in the middle. There's only one seat. It was that, the old man. Hmm. Hmm. Let's quickly go over all the evidence that could be relevant here. That would... Let's go one by one. I don't, for this current thing, this isn't important, this isn't important, this isn't important, no, no, no. When the incident occurred, I broke the vase at my seat. Floor plans, they claim that he was sitting there. And this has to be important then, right? Autopsy, that doesn't seem important to this current thing. Crime scene photo. We can't see the guy's face, so we can't point to where the HMD was. But even then, Godot had that stupid argument of like, Oh, he's slightly insane, but not elsewhere. That was just kind of silly. But... The vase! The vase here! Where they claim the old man was sitting and this was broken! We ha! Yeah! You stupid fool! You morang! You are a fool! Was that was the seat that he was sitting at? No, it was not. Uh, now, uh, do I present... I feel like we should present the crime photo? Because technically the information... Because again, they claim Kudo was sitting at that table and uh, saw around the divider through use of the mirror. But in the crime scene photo, we see that the vase that he claims he broke is not broken. And he said that he didn't move anything else, so crime scene photo! Objection. This piece of evidence contradicts with the testimony we have heard, Your Honor. The crime photo? Yes, this photo clearly shows something that theoretically should not exist. What on earth do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? Should not exist. Ha! Huh. Sounds like you're describing yourself, trite. Great, now I'm just imagining that meme, but with Godot. You should kill yourself. Now! Now then, if the defense would please clarify its statement. What is the something that should not exist in this photo? Why just a vase? I think it's pretty obvious that this is that this is what should not be in the picture. The vase? What possible connection does that have to do with the witness's testimony? Your Honor, I'm telling you that that there should have been no vase on this table. Because it very clearly contradicts with this piece of evidence. There is no, there is one thing that was clearly demonstrated by yesterday's testimony. Mr. Kudo broke the vase that was on the table where he was sitting. And yet, as the court can see, there's an unbroken vase on the table next to the victim. Why? 
because Mr. Kuda was not, in fact, sitting at that table next to the victim at all. Don't be an idiot, Shrat. That's impossible. That seat's the only one that could have seen the victim's reflection from. Exactly. There's only one conclusion we can draw from this contradiction. There was no mirror in Tres Bien that day. Your testimony, Mr. Armstrong, is an elaborate lie. Mon dieu! Don't try to confuse the court, Trat. Obviously, the witness cleaned up the vase while the police were taking their time getting to the crime scene. Unfortunately, Mr. Godot, that doesn't quite work for me. Mr. Armstrong already testified in the, to the contrary in his own words. I did not touch anything else except the mirror. Uh, uh. Ah! Well, witness, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> I was right. There was no mirror in the restaurant that day. In light of this revelation, we return back to the original problem. Why did the victim have an earpiece in the ear in which he couldn't hear? Ah, <sighs> you only get one shot in life. There's no turning back. If we, if you want to claim that mirror wasn't there, Trite, then this problem is all yours. How do you explain what the old man saw? If I can answer this, then I'll be that much closer to the truth. I can feel it. Are you going to be okay? Can you really solve this contradiction, Nick? There's more than just one contradiction, Maya. What do you mean? Remember what Maggie told us? There was another man at the victim's table. And there was a sample CD on the victim's table. It all flies in the face of Mr. Kudo's testimony. And I think I know the reason why nothing in this case is adding up. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your answer. Yes, Your Honor. The reason behind all the contradictions in Mr. Kudo's testimony is simple. Well, let's read the answers. M made a mistake. The ear doctor made a mistake. The victim was a phony. That's the one I believe. I believe that Le Tigre pretended to be the victim to bibbidi ba Use Kudo as a patsy. The victim was a phony! This case is riddled with contradictions. Yet there's one very simple answer that clears them all up. And what is that? The incident Mr. Kuda witnessed and the incident the victim experienced were two completely different events. What? Yes, the victim that Mr. Kudo saw wasn't Mr. Glen Elg at all. It was an imposter, a phony pretending to be Mr. Elg. And there it is, the underwhelming twist. The one that I saw coming a mile away the moment that Mr. Kudo said that he saw the waitress put something in the coffee. <laughs> I find that amusing. And I gotta say, even though I saw it coming, it does feel a bit weird. 3-2 was better. So far, definitely. Mask to Mask was a very fun a very interesting case. It begins with a not murder, and then it turns into a murder. That was great. And also, Pinocchio Man, Ace Detective. He was kind of amusing as well. This one, it feels like the facts of the case are kind of interesting. How they mesh together and twist. But the execution and the characters make it feel off to me. I still find it decently okay, but, like, I preferred the circus. <laughs> I preferred the circus from the previous game. Obviously, unlike the victim, there was nothing wrong with the imposter's left eardrum. That's how he ended up wearing the earpiece in his left ear by mistake. I love that he, like, takes coffee just to do a spit take. Order! Order in the court! Settle down or I'll clear the courtroom! Quiet, Gramps. What are you clear out of here, huh? What did you say?! Trite, are you saying that what Mr. Kudo saw was a setup? 
Yes. Someone pretended to be Glen Elg and acted out the whole coffee poisoning. All for the express purpose of creating a witness out of one Mr. Victor Kudo. Get real, Trite. Who would anyone want- Why would anyone want to do that? Isn't it obvious? The thing Mr. Kudo was most insistent about in his testimony... The serving girl brought him a javachino, but she put something in it. That's the serving girl right there in the defendant's chair. I remember her well. Uh, it's so hard to believe, but... There was one and only one reason to show Mr. Kudo this fake poisoning. To show Maggie Beard in the act of poisoning the coffee. Are you insinuating that the waitress in the old man's story was a fake as well? It's true that there were no other customers in the restaurant at the time, but... It's also true that the chef was there. He would have noticed what was happening. Then that's right. Well, witness, if your restaurant really was the scene of such theatrics, you would have known about it, correct? Oh la la, this is most difficult for me. No, it's quite simple. All you have to do is testify. You are under oath, after all. Was there, in fact, a phony at Tresbien that day? The defense demands that Mr. Armstrong tell the whole truth about what happened. The defense's request for additional testimony is accepted. You will accurately explain in detail the events of the restaurant that day. We. Oui. After you beat me up, Armstrong, I have no mercy for you. I'm gonna throw you in jail as well. You are going to burn in hell. From, for basically having a pyramid scheme out of your essential oils. Le Victor Monsieur Elg, he came to my restaurant alone. I remember the old man arrived not long after him. There were no other customers. When he got word, he won the lottery, Mon. I guess Monsieur Mon Elg became very excited. It was approximately five minutes later that the poisoning incident occurred. Non, there was no time for a phony to do the acting. Just so we're clear, there was no mirror in the restaurant after all. Je vous demande pardon. Forgive me, Your Honor. I lied because I wanted this mess to be cleared up quickly. I still think that should damage your integrity. Heavily. What have you just done is commit perjury, Mr. Armstrong. I will decide how to punish you later. We. Oui. For now, we will hear your cross-examination. Mr. Wright, if you please. He took that perjury charge a bit too well. But I'm guessing he'll be in more serious trouble after the cross-examination. Hmm. I'm going to guess that the time thing will be important. Like, we'll press and maybe be able to force him to qualify. Because we know that... I wish that we had, like, better, like, evidence on when Kudo went to get the police call. Because we know when the lottery show is. And if we can prove that the lottery show happened much earlier than Kudo leaving, we will have perfect things. Hmm. Once again, we're going to press for everything. And let's go. Was he alone at his table as well? My we, I saw him from the kitchen. Yet the defendant, Miss Beard, remembers it differently. She swears there was another man at the victim's table. Ha! Huh. Unfortunately for you, Trot, yesterday's witness also testified that the victim was alone. You know, seeing you squirm like that reminds me of a certain coffee's bittersweet bite. What kind of coffee has he been drinking? It's not coffee, it's love. It's love that's bittersweet. Every Maya say that makes her seem wise all of a sudden. I remember the M. Odin of Debley. By old man, you mean Victor Kudo, correct? Oui, it comes often for my special coffee. I drank your coffee once, Mr. Armstrong. It's special, I'll give you that. It's worth a ship just for the experience. 
Oh, you make me so happy. Monsieur, you are the most welcome any time. I said it was worth one sip, and nothing more. So old Mr. Kudo arrived at the restaurant around the same time as the victim. Maybe I should ask about his arrival in more detail. What time was it? Out of curiosity, about what time was it when Mr. Kudo arrived? Oh no, I cannot remember, Monsieur. Hmm, I believe we were told by a witness yesterday. The crime was reported at 2.25 by a kind of scary old man, sir. Does that perhaps jog your memory, witness? The incident happened about 20 minutes after he arrived. So the victim must have arrived between 2 p.m. and 2.10 p.m., non? Hmm, just after 2, huh? Thank you for your help in jogging my memory, monsieur. You are wonderful. <laughs> I can't sit here all the time and do nothing, now can I? The time of day will be added to the witness's testimony. Oui, monsieur judge, everything I do, I do it for you. Merci bien. That's French, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad at least one person is in a good mood. He's even humming a song to himself. I think we got closer. Let's keep pressing. Are you absolutely sure about the time? When I think really odd, it, I'm, uh, I'm sure it must be just after two, oui. We. It is the time I stop serving the lunch menu. Quite right. I always break for lunch when the restaurants are serving their specials. I've been known to wind up a, a, a case early just to make it on time. <laughs> I guess you should never get between a hungry judge and his lunch. Oh, would you look at that? It's almost lunchtime already. Witness, get on with your testimony, please. Is there no other customers? So your only customers were Mr. Kudo and the victim. How many times do you need to ask the same thing, Trite? You never catch me drinking the same blend twice. Huh? You're trying to establish the presence of a phony victim in the restaurant. But you're wasting your time. You can't grind bird seed to make coffee if you catch my drift. But there's a hole in this testimony somewhere, I'm sure of it. Did you see him? No, now he's in the kitchen, but I heard him. I remember him shouting, Yes, I have a million bucks! Presumably the defendant heard that too, then, correct? Maggie? She looked like a poor little frightened dove. And what about Mr. Kudo? The old man choked on some bird seeds that got stuck in his throat. Hmm, it seems we now have yet another incident on our hands. It was approximately five minutes later the poisoning occurred. And what were you doing at that point? Without any customers, you must have had time to kill. I'm a multi-talented woman, monsieur. Sorry? What do you mean? There is a, a renowned chef, Jean Armstrong, and the tragic poet, Clarice Armstrong. The Clarice? We oui, I was writing a poem. An angry tale of a chef and half a million dollars of debt. Cooking for a man who won half a million dollars on the lottery. It is called Pourquoi? It means why. Perhaps I could recite it for the court? Please don't. Ha! <laughs> no, there was no time for a phony to do the acting. You mean you contacted the police as soon as the incident occurred? I asked the old man to call from the payphone. By your own argument, Shrat. The purpose of this phony victim's performance was so the old man would see it. In other words, once the incident occurred, this opportunity would completely disappear. Indeed. Bien, it seems the shadow of doubt has been lifted, n'est-ce pas? I guess Mr. Armstrong's connected to this case, huh? Absolutely. Someone was impersonating Mr. Elg, and I refuse to believe he was oblivious. He was there the whole time, after all. But if you're right, wouldn't Maggie have noticed, too? She fell unconscious when the incident occurred, remember? Ah, you mean that's when the phony staged his act. We'll know for sure once I find a hole in this testimony. Hmm. Now I think the perfect thing would be... Da da da. Where is it? Where is it? Da da da. Just after two, I am going to think and present 
the radio show uh, flyer, I do believe. Where is it? Because it could only happen at 1.30! I'm afraid I finally got you, Mr. Armstrong. Okay, what do you mean? At the time in question, the victim was listening to the radio with his earpiece. The show he was listening to was Millionaire Radio. Each week, they announced the winning numbers of the half a million dollar lottery ticket. Oui, that must be the showman, uh, Monsieur Elg was listening to. I can't see any problem with this testimony, Mr. Wright. I wonder. You say the victim arrived at your restaurant after two, correct? Oui, oui, I'm sure of it. I remember it perfectly now. I know it was that time because I'd just finished serving a lunch menu. Get to the point, Shrike, if you have one. That show is broadcast live at 1.30 p.m. And it claims to be the most thrilling 10 minutes of your life. It's on the air at 1.30? Now, supposedly, the victim made some noise when it was announced that he had won. And yet, I don't believe his cry of joy could have occurred after 2 p.m. Because the show had already finished more than 30 minutes earlier by that point in time. No! This victim we've been told about has done nothing but the impossible. Listening to the radio with a ruptured eardrum. Catching a show that was already over. There's only one conclusion you can draw from these facts. Silence phone. This victim was an imposter acting out the poisoning 30 minutes after the real murder. Yes, there were two Glen Elgs in Tres Bien that day. The real Glen Elg, now dead, having been poisoned by the real killer, and the phony Glen Elg acting out the events for Mr. Kudo to witness. It certainly seems that way. I mean, if that wasn't the case, how could you explain the time discrepancy? Quite a performance, Trax. You were almost on a roll. But sadly, you lack the rock-hard foundation of rhythm to build your song. What is this? Music Theory 101? Let's recap. According to your imaginative theory, it's now just after 2 p.m. The phony Glen Elg is performing a play for the benefit of Mr. Kudo. How do you explain, then, where the real Glen Elg is? I don't believe I have to spell this out for the court. However, at that time, the real Glen Elg was already dead. That's certainly the obvious conclusion. Thank you, Trad. That's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. What? Now, I presume you can prove this theory of yours. Can you explain where the missing corpse went to? The, the missing corpse? According to the old man's testimony, there was only one other customer there. If that customer was the phony Glen Elk. Then where did the killer hide the body of the real victim? Yeah. The prosecution has a valid point, Mr. Wright. If your theory is to stand up to examination by the court, you must provide us with proof by answering the court prosecution's question. Where did the killer hide the body? Yes, Your Honor. No conjecture, Trite. Let's hear some facts for once. Show the court a piece of evidence that proves where the body was hidden. Evidence? What's with the intense pressure in here all of a sudden? I thought I had him with that contradiction. But he's turned it all around and backed me into a corner instead. Well, Mr. Wright, the court will now hear the defense's theory and evidence. First, where was the body of the real Elg? Inside Tres Bien. It would have to have been dangerous to take the body outside. Obviously, the body must have been hidden somewhere inside Tres Bien. Hmm, interesting. But where would a body have been hidden inside a restaurant? Perhaps you would care to show the court on these plans, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. I'm gonna say inside the kitchen. The exact location of where the body was hidden... The body was hidden here! Hmm, I see. Nice supposition. But the real question is, can you back it up? Where's the evidence that proves the body was hidden in that location? Ta-da! Mr. Armstrong, do you recognize this bottle? 
None! No, 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 no! I've never seen that ugly body before in my life! I only use the very best bottles, monsieur. The highest quality only for me. Where was that bottle found, Mr. Wright? Interestingly enough, Your Honor, it was found in the kitchen of Tresbien. Eh? Uh, but I only ever use these bottles for my aromatherapy oils. But this bottle doesn't contain aromatherapy oil, Mr. Armstrong. No, it contains a medication. What kind of medication? I'm sure everyone remembers, don't they? That Mr. Elk visited an otolar... I have no idea how to say that. Otolar... I can't say it. Clinic and was given medication that day. You can't be serious. The defense had the contents of the bottle analyzed, and I have the lab results here! The contents of the bottle match the prescription that was given to Mr. Elg! <laughs> Glen Elg's murderer hid the body in the restaurant kitchen, at which time this bottle fell out of the victim's pocket. Mr. Armstrong, when the incident occurred, didn't you say you were in the kitchen? Mon dieu! Yes, you know what I'm about to say. It was you who hid the victim's body. You did a fine job pretending to defend my client, Maggie Beard. However, you are setting her up to take the fall behind the poor girl's back. None! Uh, order! Order! This is an extraordinary development. Witness, did you... Did you murder Mr. Glen Elg? Never! I could do no such thing, an horrible such thing! Mm. No! No! M Mr. Godot? The bitterness. Every time I get lied to, I always down a cup of coffee. And that's one of my rules. Do you have the slightest idea how many cups you've had by now? <laughs> Is that implying that he's been lied to a lot, Phoenix? And I like to do the same to the person who lied to me. I like to take them down with my empty cup. Listen up, chef. How about a brand new flavor in your ear, my H-deficient friend? Je vous demande pardon. Please, you must hear me out. It is a trap. Listen to me. Por favor. You hablé español, Mr. Armstrong, and por favor is Spanish. I'm only going to ask you once. Did you do it? None! No, none! Absolutely none! I simply... I... Let's hear it. You've got one shot. Right, Gramps? Witness, the court will permit you the chance to make one final statement. If you lie under oath again, Mr. Godot's coffee mug awaits you. <laughs> As does my gavel! Oui, it is clear. Why do they... What do they always say in the movies? I've got a bad feeling about this. Very well! Begin your final testimony, Mr. Armstrong. Well, let's see. It is true. I hid the body in the kitchen. A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. But I did not kill him. I swear it. You must believe me. You were forced? By who? I cannot say or I will be erased. Let's try a different question then. When Mr. Elk died, was he really the only person at his table? There was. There was another man. I knew it. Maggie was telling the truth. You may cross-examine the witness now, Mr. Wright. There's just one more thing I need to do. I gotta break this guy and get him to tell us the name of the real killer. Once more, we will press on everything, just to see. Did you carry the body by yourself? Oui, I carried him. I carried Maggie, too. Maggie, too? 
when she saw the victim collapse, she fainted. I could not leave her there. But why did you hide the bodies? A man forced me to do it. I had no choice. What man? Who was he? None. None. I cannot say. I fear for my life. He's really scared. He'll just have to put the words in his mouth, Nick. Yeah, you're right. If you won't tell me, I'll tell him. But why would you go along with this man? I had to go along with him because there was a reason why I could not refuse. And what reason would that be? You, mon you know, Monsieur. Yes? Surely you cannot expect a young maiden to talk about such an embarrassment. A maiden? You're a bit too old to get away with that. And a bit too male. Oh, come on, Maya. Be a bit more open-minded. Let's just be ageist here. I can't finish the cross-examination without establishing his reason. So we'll just have to prove it. With evidence. And we'll press this too, because why not? So you are claiming that all you did was hide the bodies, is that correct? Oui, that's right. We are to believe you, Mr. Armstrong. You must tell the court everything. You must make clear the identity of the man who ordered you to do this. He's already confessed this much. He might as well stop dancing around the real issue. Yeah, but he really doesn't want to tell us who the killer is. Then suck it to him, Nick. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I'm going to assume... That we need to, at first, supply the identity. And I then we might be able to follow up with the uh, tender lender loan. Let's end this dance of Ring Around the Rosie, Mr. Armstrong. This is the man you've been referring to. Ah! Who is that? I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a month ago in this very courtroom. This man is Furio Tigre. He's the manager of a loan office called Tenderlinder. There's no point trying to hide the truth anymore, Mr. Armstrong. I know you couldn't go against Mr. Tigre. At least not at while he had this on you. A half a million dollar loan from a black market loan shark. And you had no way of paying it back, did you? That's why you were forced to do anything this man told you. We, oui, it is as you say. Mr. Armstrong. Le Tiger, it told me it was going to use my restaurant for a business rendezvous. On the day in question, it was meeting the victim to demand that he repay his loan. I don't know why it happened like that. I just did what he told me to do. I had no choice. I carried the body and the unconscious Maggie out of the dining area and into the kitchen. After that, I just tried to forget what I had seen. I think we can now safely say that man who forced your hand was Mr. Furio Tigre. Hmm, I do have one further question for you, Mr. Armstrong. The poison and the lottery ticket that were found in the defendant's apron pocket. Was that your doing as well? None. I knew nothing about that. Making it look like it was Maggie who had done it. I was... I was not... Uh, it is despicable. Mr. Godot. You will summon this Furio Tigre as a witness. I doubt that can be arranged today, so we will adjourn for now. Proceedings will continue tomorrow. Thirty minutes. What? The trial will go on. I'll see to it myself. I need half an hour to get that guy on the stand. Not a minute more. How the... Don't sit back and relax yet, Trite. No one knows if that chef is really telling the truth or not. This trial could still go either way. Uh, very well. Your request is granted, Mr. Godot. We will resume once Mr. Tigre is ready to take the stand. Until then, court is adjourned for a 30-minute recess. Why is he so intent on having it be today, I wonder? But that was fun! Breaking down 
Armstrong. And I'm going to assume that the next time will be the final court proceedings, or at least a roundabout. I don't think there's going to be another investigative point, because we have the the virus, we have the $1 million, like, uh, medical things. But I'm trying to get my head in order, because this is an odd case. It's just the vibe of it. The vibe is weird. A lot of it is pretty cool. The mystery is pretty decent. Even if, like... I do find the bit of Godot kind of going like... Oh, we have to trust this guy. He's infallible, except for this one bit that would prove something else wrong. And he's basically continuously going, Well, actually, how can we trust this part of this guy? While still saying that other parts are true. It's weird. It's very weird. Because technically, if, like, it just feels weird. And the twist that it was reenacted, while I did call it, is also a bit strange. Like, the characters in this case are a bit strange. Some of the twists are a little strange. Overall, like... It feels weirdly contained and small. Like, there's a lot going on here. It's hard to get my head around it. Like, I like it decently enough, I suppose. Decently enough. It's definitely not my favorite. Like, it's intricate. It's kind of interesting. Weirdness isn't technically a bad thing unless it gets in the way of gameplay. And I guess the it happening twice could uh, trip people up. I will say, like, the last minute... Oh, there was a mirror, and I had to prove that there wasn't a mirror. It's like, it's just weird. <laughs> but overall, I'm liking the case well enough. I would say that it's the least case of this game so far because the tutorial case was cool. We got to play as Mia defending Phoenix Wright. That was cool. Mask to Mask's case was cool and interesting. I'm trying to think. Honestly? <laughs> it's good you like it. I didn't. I'm trying to see, like, how many cases I would put under it, though. Because if we, like, with the second game, I guess I would put Maggie's initial case, the tutorial of the second game, below this one. Because this one has a bit more personality to it. But otherwise... Hmm... I almost would want to put the tutorial case of the first game over this one. If only because the tutorial case of the first game is just so, like, normal. It's normal, self-contained, it's weird. But at the same time, I wouldn't put the tutorial case of the second game under the first one. It's weird. I'll have One, one of these days after I beat the, the trilogy, I'll have to make that video of, like, the Ace Attorney trilogy cases ranked. That'll be interesting. But yeah, it's definitely an odd case. It's just weird. The characters are weird. The presentation is weird. The mystery is cool. 1-1 <laughs> one, one is excellent, and I don't like people who say otherwise. It's a... T like, the only reason I could see people saying that it's quote-unquote bad is because it's simple. Because it's the tutorial case for the entire franchise. So once the rest of the series gets rolling... Like, they kind of expect you to begin with the first game, so those tutorial cases are more in-depth. <laughs> a satisfying Ace Attorney trial is, in less than 30 minutes, that defines the entire series. It is very good. There's no issues with it. It's easy, but it's meant to be easy. It does its job very well while having a good atmosphere and feeling to it. And also, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, criminal of that case... It is amusing to me. 
honestly, like, it's weird because I can't put the tutorial case of, uh, 1-1, one, one, or, like, the tutorial case of the first game, underneath, like, the second case of the first game, even though the second case has more negatives towards it than the uh, tutorial case. It's that weird thing. But, yeah, the, the, the tutorial case of the entire franchise, it's very good. It's nice, quick, easy, and charming. So people saying, ah, it's short and therefore it's short and easy, therefore it's bad. Nah. It does its job and it does it really good. But yes. We have basically everything laid out. It'll it's just like next time we'll be taking down D D Mr. Tiger Man, Lone Shark Dude. So that might be interesting. But there isn't really any mystery left, I don't think. It's just going to be proving that Don Tigre is guilty. Furio is the bad man. And we'll do that next time. Because we've been going for two and a half hours. We did a decent lot. We just breezed past those, like, cross-examinations, I gotta say. They felt like they went really fast. But... Yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want more from me, I have uh, two YouTube channels that you could check out if you so please. Like my edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings, which I swear, content is coming eventually. I just have to make like a few more assets and then actually edit the thing, and editing is evil. <laughs> And then if you want more of these stream gameplays, my archive channel that I always also stream to is Neon Icy Games on YouTube. So if you prefer watching streams on YouTube, or if you'd like to catch up on the past Ace Attorney streams that I've done, you can do so there. Other places are if you prefer to watch these streams live on Twitch. I have twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. Other such places are the various art sites I post to, so if you like my little avatar in the corner, you can see me post various arts to the various social medias like Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Pillowfort, Inkblot, there's so many places, all because Twitter slash X is imploding. But you can find links to all of those and more in my link tree. Such as links to my... Oh yeah, the link tree is link dot... It should be linktr.ee slash Neon Icy Wings, I believe. It's been a bit since I actually looked at the link because I am a fool. But other such things found in the link tree are my archive of my own and my Patreon. So if you want to see various writings that I have doth written or want to throw some jollery dues my way so I don't end up like Armstrong and be forced to commit crimes lest I be murdered... That would be appreciated. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye.